Hi, my name is Jim Earl, and today we're going to have a look at WPF PowerShell hiding, disabling, collapsing, enabling, etc. Um, so, in front of us, we've got the regular Visual Studio projects that we've seen in uh, previous ex episodes. Simple window with three pages. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a checkbox here, and let's call that title checkbox to differentiate it from any others that we have all right and uh, let's also say call it enable now what we want to do when uh, we hit this checkbox is effectively enable and disable this next button perhaps not very um, useful in the current bit, but say, imagine this is uh, accepting a Euler or something like that. Now we want to be able to enable and disable this next button by hitting the checkbox. All right, what else do we want to do? Well, we want to make sure that by default, this next button is not enabled because we want to have an action to make sure it's enabled. And for this next page, we're going to choose where we're going to look at CPU memory or disk or any one of the three. So again we're going to uh, disable the next button. Now what behavior do I want here? So I want at least one of these to be selected and as long as at least one is selected then the next button should be enabled. But if you untick a checkbox but there's still one left ticked it shouldn't disable the next button. It's only when zero buttons are then unticked that it should disable the next button. And for the finish, what I want to do is when you pick any one of those three, I want these three text blocks to be in a nice list, but I don't want, if you select CPU and disk, there to be a big gap where memory selected should be. So effectively, I want this still to look nice, even though um, even though you can pick any one of the three. So let's put a stack panel in here. Now a stack panel allows you, as you might think, to stack various other um, items inside it. So if we take CPU and we'll hold Alt to drop it in, and we'll do exactly the same with memory and exactly the same with disk. And now we can move that up as a whole. All right, now we can see that in the XAML, those text blocks are within the stack panel. So now we know they're child items of that stack panel and they're stacked nice and evenly on top of each other. All right, so let's save the changes to that project and go and have a look at the code. So building on the code again, uh, as we can see, if you want to go to the code, uh, if you want to have a copy of the code, go and feel free to go to my GitHub and download it. So already, what we have, we have the function from uh, that we did in episode two, and we're taking all the XAML objects and, uh, that we're producing and uh, creating a GUI with those. Now, we did the next, back, etc. buttons as well in there. And then from uh, episode three, I think we did the radio buttons, and we now we know what we're doing with the radio buttons. If we're effectively setting that last bit of text block on the f on the uh, final page to the type of hypervisor that we've chosen for the radio buttons. Now then, here's the new bit. So for that new checkbox, the title checkbox that we added, effectively. This title button next is enabled. We're going to set to true. Now, the interesting thing about how you know, uh, it's an easy way to tell whether this is a, what values you should put in here. If we go back to Visual Studio and we go back to this next button, is enabled. So you want to type it in PowerShell exactly as it says in, uh, in Visual Studio. Although it isn't case sensitive, I do find it helpful to maintain the case. And if it's a checkbox, then effectively it's going to be true false. Whereas if it's a drop down, then you're going to have to pick from that range of objects 
uh, range of uh, range of parameters and set specify those exactly so you always know that if it's if it's a tick box then in your code you're going to have to say true false so tail button next is enabled is true and remember because it's a checkbox we need to have both a checked and an unchecked action so now what we should have happen is let's just slightly out of alignment is that um, if we check it or uncheck it then it en uh, enables and disables that next button so the logic for the um, three checkboxes where we're looking at CPU memory and disk now this is a little bit more complicated now for the add checked what we're looking at is we're going to set the visibility flag of the text box to visible now when I first started doing this my initial uh, my initial thought was like visibility should be a true false well the reason why it's not true false is because there's three possible answers this hidden visible and collapsed now we want to make sure at the moment that uh, it's visible when we're adding checked we're enabling the next button because we know that if one of those tick boxes is checked we want to have our next button enabled and we're just setting a flag here to true and the flag here is I pre-created this object with CPU memory and disk flags so that whenever we're checking one of the uh, one of those resource flags we're adding a oh, that's unchecked let's go for checked we can see that CPU memory and disk flags are checked all fair enough now then for the add unchecked we want to make sure that if there is still another checkbox checked then we are not going to disable the next button so when we add unchecked what we're going to do is we're going to collapse the text box which hopefully means that it should not just hide but be rendered in the background it's actually be removed from the rendering so in that stack panel things move up and down so you get a nice list still we'll set the flag to false and then we'll check all three flags to see if any of them contain true and if none do then we will disable the next button and we can see that across the add unchecked through here now what we've got here is we've got a bit of repeating code so in general uh, I personally don't like to have any uh, repeating code I would like to do things once seems much easier and lazier and um, so I'd probably put that in the function or oh, there's other ways you can do it sort of rootable events etc and uh, particularly rootable events we will check in uh, another episode so if we have a look at debug and let's see if we can launch the application which we can and let's see if any of our stuff uh, fails so we've got enable and disable which enables and disables the next one excellent that's worked now then we start off disabled because we configured that in the XAML in Visual Studio so Visual Studio so next is disabled so what should happen is if I tick one or more of these that next button should enable which it does if I untick one it should still be enabled still be enabled now disabled so any two so one or more enabled none disabled alright so let's see if we tick all three and we go next now we can see all three <coughs> if we've just got one just see one if we just got CPU and disk the memory there shouldn't be a gap and that's because we've set it to hidden in our stack panel and we've ended up with a with a nice list and if we put that back in there we go perfect so we can see that whatever 
happens there, then uh, we still got a nice, a nice list with no gaps. All right, as I say, for all of this code, you can uh, find that on my uh, uh, GitHub. Uh, this link. Uh, happy playing with your geese. Cheers. Bye.